Hi everyone, welcome to today's uh, Ask the Aquarist. Um, it's part of our 50th anniversary celebration here at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. Uh, I'm Brian Jones, I'm the curator here at the aquarium. And today we wanted to show you uh, and teach you a little bit about our alligators. Um, we have a couple of juveniles. We separated one from the display just to be able to show you guys up close. Uh, this is the American alligator. And it's a, definitely a young one. This one, this individual is only about six or seven months old. And we are lucky enough that the folks at the Alligator Alley over in Somerdale, Alabama, have been happy to share with us. Uh, every couple of years, they loan us uh, baby alligators. So these are, this is one of our newest residents. Uh, this one hatched out back in September, hatched out of an egg. And once it was uh, deemed good and healthy, they were happy to share it with us. So we have it on display along with one of its siblings. And at this size, it's really tricky to tell boy from girl. So at this point, we don't know if they're brother and brother, brother, sister, sister and sister, we don't know, but they get along fine at this age. Uh, every now and then they wrestle over food. They get a little jealous of each other eating, but other than that, they don't, they don't really bother each other. Um, neat little reptiles. They are a native reptile to the southeastern U.S. Uh, you can find them all the way from the coast, like the Atlantic coast of North Carolina and the swamps there, uh, throughout the southeast, all the way down to the very northeastern tip of Mexico. Uh, they'll range naturally about as far north as Memphis or even uh, north central Arkansas, but they're much more numerous here in the deep south in Florida, uh, southern Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. They, um, this one is a really small one. He's probably, <laughs> he's a little <laughs> nervous. He's probably 14 inches long from the tip of his sna snout to the tip of his tail they can potentially grow over 15 feet long. Uh, the, the officially documented world record is almost 16 feet and weighed a little over a thousand pounds and was caught here in Alabama, up in central Alabama, just a few years ago. Um, it's interesting that the alligator, unlike most mammals and birds, um, alligators really never stop growing. So the really, really big ones are probably the oldest. They can live upwards of about 60 years. And um, do they have to live in fresh water or can they live in salt water or how does that? Right, they are primarily a freshwater species. They, they like the swamps. Uh, they like to be away from people mostly, uh, though you will sometimes find them in golf course ponds um, as we've built in their territory. Uh, but they do tolerate some salt water. Um, we do find them occasionally right along the Gulf Coast on barrier islands like, like Dolphin Island. Uh, we have a, a large freshwater lake in the interior of the island and there are typically at least one alligator in that lake. Uh, we think they, they primarily swim down from the tributaries either intentionally or sometimes they just get caught up in the spring floods and wind up on the beaches. Uh, just yesterday I saw a picture from the Dolphin Island beach um, of a, a relatively small alligator that was in the surf. Uh, they're, they're definitely not happy in the salt water. They can live there okay for probably a few weeks, but, um, but yeah, they, they prefer the fresh water. I think they end up uh, long-term having some health issues uh, trying to tolerate the salt water. Um, so with this little guy, it's kind of easy to point out some of the characteristics that separate a crocodile and an alligator. Right, correct? yes. And, and that's interesting that there are only two alligator species in the world. Uh, there's the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. But both of those species have relatively short snouts compared to the crocodiles. You can see this guy's got more of a duck bill shaped snout. Uh, crocodiles tend to be a lot longer and narrower. Um, and crocodiles around the world uh, actually get bigger than the biggest American alligator. And then do they have, so with their eyelids, do they have anything that comes over as they're eating or? They're, yeah, they're, they're oh, pick this one up. We'll take a close look at it. Be really gentle with these little guys, but 
they have what's called nictitating membranes on their eyes and those membranes function sort of like swim goggles. Let's see if we can just gently, there, you saw that blink? Mm -hmm. So that allows them to stay underwater and feed and still see what they're doing, but it protects their eyeballs a little bit. And then having him open his mouth with those teeth, do they grow teeth as they get older or are they, how are their teeth, do they get, just get bigger? Are they basically like human teeth? Right? Is it like shark teeth? It's, it is similar to shark's teeth. They shed their teeth throughout their life. So the, uh, the baby alligator teeth are much uh, sharper and pointier than in an adult's teeth. It's mainly based on what they're feeding on. So the, the little guys are grabbing bugs and crayfish and tadpoles um, and they just need those little teeth to be able to grab onto things. The bigger alligators eat a lot more uh, big bone mammals and especially turtles. They need sh blunt, strong, stout teeth to be able to crush the food that they eat. So they do shed their teeth throughout their life. Um, not just not just baby teeth going to adult teeth like humans, but these guys will they'll get in a tussle or bite down on a turtle and break a tooth off and it'll grow back. So they, they really never run out of teeth. And then looking at their feet, you said that they tend to tear and rip. Do they use their their nails on their feet for that? Um, not so much. Um, when they when they get a bite of food. Um, that's a little too big, they, they can actually roll, they'll twist their whole body, spin their whole body, and it tears pieces of food off. Say if they happen to get a, a big pig along the shoreline or something that they can't swallow whole, uh, they will try to rip pieces off. Their claws and their feet are mainly for crawling through the vegetation or the mud along the shore. And you can see they are webbed, so that helps them propel themselves a little bit. But the main propulsion is the tail. It's flattened side to side. I'll rotate it here so you can see. So when they wave that tail back and forth in the water, that allows them to swim pretty fast. Go ahead and put him down. Yeah. So he gets, one thing that's interesting is um, the stress that they can take on when they're around people or you know in this situation, they don't wanna be around them. They really don't. Um, they would much, much rather be out in the wilderness. Uh, they are quite adaptable. I mean, they are a species that's been around for 8 million years, so they, they have to be able to tolerate change. So they, they will adapt to living around people, but they, uh, they definitely prefer life out in the wilderness. Um, anytime you see an alligator that isn't afraid of people, that's one to be a little more concerned about. Uh, wild alligators, uh, it's extremely rare that they have any bad interactions with people, like chase after people or pets. Um, it's those alligators that have been acclimated to people, and especially people feeding them. Uh, it may seem fun, but feeding an alligator trains it to associate people with food. So that can be bad when, when uh, down the road somebody doesn't have a piece of food, but that alligator's hungry. So one reason that we want people to know about alligators is because of their, A, their connection between marine waters and fresh, and fresh water, but also they're a sentinel for our environment, aren't they? They are. They, they are an apex predator, and just like sharks, uh, those apex predators are very important with regulating populations of other animals, and uh, they do indicate uh, potential problems in the habitat because they as they eat, they accumulate toxins in their body. So when we take uh, samples from alligators, you can take a, a little bitty piece of tissue and run uh, toxicology tests on it, and that can indicate whether the rest of the environment is healthy or not. Uh, their population back in the 1900s uh, dwindled quite substantially. They, the people would hunt them. Their, the meat in their tail is good to eat, and their, their skin would be used for making uh, making all different sorts of things, but the population dwindled, so the United States put a, uh, some strict regulations on harvesting them, and actually they ended up being protected by the Environmental, I'm sorry, the uh, Endangered Species Act in 1973. And since then, they've made a huge comeback. Um, their numbers have rebounded so well 
that a number of states do allow a uh, small harvest. Uh, hunters and sportsmen will go out and, and they're only allowed a certain number and each one of those that's harvested does get sampled for the scientists to study those toxins and, and other issues that they might be able to, to check on the rest of the environment. So it's, it is a, quite a success story with the regulations. The reason they're still on the protected list, they're, they're officially deemed threatened, is because they somewhat resemble the truly endangered American crocodile. And just to minimize accidental harvest of crocodiles, uh, the, the country has decided to go ahead and continue protecting the alligator, even though their numbers have rebounded quite substantially. So when you look at an alligator, you think lizard. But they, are they related to a lizard? They're very distant cousins of lizards. And it's interesting, al the name alligator uh, comes from the, the Spanish word for lizard. But it's a, it's a bit of a misnomer because alligators are actually more closely related to some of the dinosaurs and even birds than they are to our modern lizards. So what do we feed them here at the aquarium while they're hanging out with us? Good question. Um, one, they're not very picky. Um, we have in the past fed them uh, crayfish, um, shrimp, squid, chopped up pieces of fish. Uh, we try to vary their diet with age as they would naturally get in, in, the, in the wild. Um, but we're also following the guidelines from uh, the folks that loaned them to us. We want to maintain the care that they were giving. So one thing that they feed is a very nutritious blend scientifically produced by a company uh, for alligators. So it's, it's almost like, it uh, looks like dog food, but it's specially designed to have the right nutrients and vitamins for alligators and their development. And we do that because they go back to alligator alley. Exactly. We typically hold them here for about two years and then we return them to alligator alley. They have a, a fantastic, large, fenced in swampy area and uh, it's, it's open to the public, especially in the, in the warmer months. And uh, yeah, you can go and see these alligators up to, I think, 12 or 13 feet. They have a couple of really large ones. So it's a great educational partnership for us to be able to share the alligators with the people who visit our aquarium and then also um, Alligator Alley. That's pretty cool. Exactly. What do you think is probably one of the biggest um, misconceptions when it comes to alligators? So like as people ask you questions in the aquarium, what do you think is the one thing that you feel like you need to kind of correct? Um, it's, it's nice that many people have a great deal of knowledge about alligators. It's, it's a good sign that our, our uh, school system is doing a good job. But one thing I do hear is, is about uh, alligators being aggressive. And uh, it sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, there are some uh, attacks on people, but that's mainly from alligators that have been trained uh, unknowingly by people feeding them. So it's, it's you know, alligators in the wild, uh, we encounter them while we're canoeing uh, right down on their level and we'll paddle right past a 10 or 12 footer. And if anything, they just slink into the water. They don't want to be around us. Um, so they, they, I've never had one chase me down or, or attack the boat. Um, so just by nature, as long as they're out in the wild and haven't been trained by people, uh, they're, they're very um, docile animals. So just keep your distance. Yeah. And don't feed them. They, they do fine on their own. It's interesting. Uh, alligators do not need to eat very much at all. Obviously the babies eat more frequently, but an adult alligator, uh, imagine a hundred pound dog in a year eats more food than an 800 pound alligator does in that year. So because they're cold blooded, they, their metabolism tends to be lower and they just don't need to eat as much as a warm blooded animal that has to spend all that energy maintaining their body heat. So these guys will bask in the sun on the banks of a, a river or a lake and that helps warm them up and uh, an adult might only need to eat I don't know every other month as long as it's a big meal most of the time they do eat food items that are relatively small like a, a big alligator might be happy with a, a couple of turtles a week um, but they do have the ability to grab a, an unwitting deer or pig along the shoreline uh, and that'll hold them over for a couple of months 
It's kind of interesting how he's been watching me. Right. So if I make a move, he makes a move. Right. It's really interesting. And it, you can see the juvenile coloration. They have those bold, light-colored stripes. That helps them camouflage in the nesting area when they, when they emerge from the nest. Um, they are designed to camouflage against those dead fallen reeds and the vegetation in the swampy areas where they're nesting. As they mature, as they get bigger, they lose those stripes and they're either a really dark green or even a black color. Um, and that dark color helps them absorb the sun's rays, helps them heat their body when they need to warm up. Well, Brian, we appreciate you taking some time to share some information about our American alligator and People can come and visit at any point in time and check this guy out. Wonderful. My Thank pleasure. You.